try to go to Alex Williams. Let's go to the, see what he's got here. And um, Alex, bring it on with Lars. Hey, guys. How are you? Okay. Can you hear me? Let's go. Well, I'm here with Lars George and Lars. I'm not sure if they can hear us out there, but we'll see what we can do here just to talk for a few minutes. Um, we are we're here at uh, the uh, Hadoop World, the, the big event, and you're here giving out your book. Can you tell us about your book a little bit? So shall I basically? Oops, there it is. Yeah. Um, so that's the first book on uh, Apache Hbase. Um, I felt back then when uh, we discussed that between the I'm a committer with uh, Hbase as well, so I'm. I'm a developer by nature, um, and back then when we talked about the, probably as a need for for, the, for any good project to have a book, and uh, so when uh, I was like more than a year ago, I got to talked into by, by another colleague of mine uh, if I wouldn't be interested because I have written blog posts on HBase, so they they approached me and said, why not you going ahead and, sh and write the book? And there it is, basically just uh, someone had to do it, and <laughs> I did it, and uh, yeah. Going going good, I guess, for HBase in general. Yeah, um, we've seen lots of talks. To, uh, yeah, today. yeah. The, well, what's the tenor of the conversation about HBase? I, you know, Project Cassini, you know, that that was discussed in the keynote, and how they're using HBase there. And they said that there are still some, there's there are still some yeah. uh, hurdles with it. Yeah. So, uh, I try to usually when I when I talk to people interested in HBase, I'm trying to make the point or state the point that. It's still an early version of a product, like 0.90 at the moment. We're, we're working on 0.92, so it's not a version one. So it's not like a shrink-wrapped software that you can just install and use. Right. It's way, way, way behind, for example, right. MySQL, where you just install it and you use it and you scale it or yeah. you build it up as you go. So with HBase, there's a lot of upfront complexity that you need to understand and appreciate. So it's a bit of a learning curve. and and. It's important for a company who wants to be successful with HBase that they have a champion in the company that that really takes it on and, and makes it their own and uh, works with HBase and even with the community getting feedback and, and giving feedback um, so that it, it's successful. So if you look at like Cassini, or for example, there um, there was a lot of discussions and a lot of talks going back and forth. Uh, in the end, it's usually quite okay and. Um, it's it's it comes down to like schema design and a few things, but uh, it needs a lot of upfront expertise, and and that's not too easy to come by. Yeah, that's a cultural change that needs to be made, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, because it's not an enterprise tool, uh, especially because I work out there. I'm not selling HBase as a product. I mean, we have it a part of our platform, so we're giving this like this part of Hadoop. We're giving HBase as a tool for big data, but the point is that. Um, this is nothing that we have produced. We're part of the community. We're helping the community. We're giving back and working on issues. But we're not really. Uh, this is not our tool. It's not like a, a, co a proprietary right. software. So uh, this happens at the pace of open source. Therefore, it's not comparable with, uh, or you can't compare this with any enterprise uh, software. So the, the release dates are slower. Uh, you can't really take anyone um, up for missing features because it's up for anyone else to help out making. It's a better software system, so it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a. There's a lot of companies who embrace this now. I mean, you see this Facebook right. is big at that, uh, and and a lot of other companies uh, publicly saying we're using HBase and we're happy with it. And but it's it took a while for them to really gain, gain the uh, the confidence to, to say so. So it's, but I think it's it's going going strong. Well, it's a model of the new storage requirements, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And uh, you know, and really, what's increasingly required. Not just for companies like Facebook, but for companies in financial services, CRM, security, mobile. Yeah. But what, we, what we see is sort of the transition from Hadoop, which is the batch oriented nature. So you, you're building uh, a system that can take in a lots and large amount of data, but you're having always a batch oriented um, layer in between. So you have to deal with uh, some sort of delay for um, the data to arrive at the at the at the end. So you're running jobs, and they they have to run for a while. Some jobs can take hours to finish. Now. That is great. So that's a, that solves a like, huge amount of problems for 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 our customers and for for companies around the world to take the next step uh, forward in terms of storing data. But then you're missing the last bit, which is sort of the real-time component. That's right. where HBase comes in. Right. HBase sort of fills that gap right. and uh, sort of helps bringing 
um, data and information directly to the end users driving websites as opposed to just generating models that um, you can use for other things. PageBase is the one that sort of bridges that gap. But I, 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 you hear that criticism about Hadoop and its lack of real-time capabilities. Mm -hmm. I wrote a post last week uh, you're talking to uh, Forrest, James Cobley, as you gave, provided five uh, potential distributions that you could do in real time with Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Is it getting better? How would you, how would you mark the state of real time uh, analytics with, uh, with Hadoop? It's an interesting topic. I think that's uh, it's going to. I think that part of, of Hadoop and HBase on top of that is going to um, really, really um, be very much an area of interest for, for a lot of companies. Because right. if you look at if you, if you hear the, the Facebook talks, for example, you can see that uh, a lot of real time for them is like half an hour. So when they say real time analytics, they're actually taking thirty minutes from the event on the website to occur or to happen or to show up in the database uh, on, on the HBase side to drive uh, to their customers. So uh, real time is, is, a, is, a, is a form of making data available more current or more immediate, but it's never at the, at the moment, it's not uh, at that scale uh, where you click on the web and immediately see the result on the, on the, uh, on the delivery side. So it's currently, when most companies talk about real time, it's this uh, from a few hours down to a few minutes. Right. Uh, but it, I, I'm sure that over the next couple of months, this is going to transition into a discussion of, okay, how can we actually bring this to actual real time, which means someone clicks on the web and I have the event in HBase right away, so I get the counters all updated within milliseconds, and I'm really close to uh, what's happening right now. But can you do that with a batch oriented? No, the, the, the uh, HBase or Hadoop is doing, still doing the batch oriented building of uh, models. Machine learning is a typical issue where you use the data that you have aggregated in, in Hadoop to do uh, recommendation engines or so, we're building mathematical models. You need to do this batch on, and on, on the entire data set and HBase often just stores the last 30 days or the last 30 hours or something like this of the data, never the entire data set. So you're still using the batch oriented huge amount of storage in, in Hadoop and you use HBase to bridge um, the whatever two hours that it needs for the job to run to bring this real time. So what I see in the future is that you have Hadoop to build the models and you use HBase to update the model as it goes live. But every two hours or every n hours, this thing wakes up and recalculates the model, updates HBase so that the error rate that HBase introduces because it doesn't have uh, all of the data available uh, is going to um, going to be covered by HBase. Uh, but you won't see this as a as a user. You basically get real time data with a slight increasing error. But the batch uh, basically doing the the recomputation fills the, or, or catches up every few hours, and therefore you're having something that looks like it's real time, but you're still using the, the, the large capacity of Hadoop to do the actual number crunching, and HBase will be sort of the, the, uh, the bridge between uh, and keeping things alive and responsive. Great. Well, Lars, George, thank you very much for taking some time to talk with us. You're welcome. Good luck in your book, and thank you very much. look forward to keeping in touch. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, Alex, we're on the show floor at uh, Hadoop World, yeah, yeah, talking yeah. to folks here. Back to you, George.